Hello? Yes, my friend, you are talking to me. Yes, hi there. Okay, so I spoke to you uh, a while ago. Yeah. Do you remember? And yeah, I remember you told me you want to bring a shake, right? Yeah. Okay, and what happened? <clears throat> okay, I couldn't find one, okay? Uh, right. Because I wanted to talk to you, to be honest, okay? Mm -hmm. But I asked them the question about Mary and Harun. Um, Mary and you, Harun, okay. Yeah, sorry. So just to give you uh, the context again. Okay. Uh, it was about you, uh, the mentioning of uh, Mary as the sister of Harun in the Quran. Mm. Okay. Okay. So I asked Islamic channel, Islamic QA. I recorded what they said. Can I just play it for you? Is that okay? You can. It's okay. But uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Just tell me if you can hear it. Okay. Okay. By the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Isa alayhi salam, and they addressed her, Ya Ukta Harun, O sister of Aaron or Harun alayhi salam. Uh, Sorry, just a quick thing, it's only going to be three minutes, okay? No so problem. Example, okay. But what is this a reference to? Now, there is the claim, or how do we understand this? Why didn't they call her by her name? Or who is she? Who is this? The sister of Harun. Who is this again, Harun? There is a view, or a number of interpretations to this. That she had a brother or a half brother. Uh, however, there's no strong evidence to support that. Not all. Secondly, that what is said is that this was a style of language that, as the brother rightly mentioned, and he quoted uh, the caller that is Imam Ibn Kathir, Rahimahullah, in his tafsir. Uh, but there's also a hadith of uh, Hadith of Mughirat ibn Shu'aba, that the people would refer at times to a righteous individual and refer them to a righteous individual of the past who was had a very very high status okay so they knew as uh, at the time that maria was a very devout worshiper so as ibn kathir he says in his tafsir that ya akhta harun ya akhta harun oh sister of our age shabihatu haruna fil ibadah the one who resembles harun in his worship okay so it's not necessarily that it's a genealogy or lineage matter it's not necessarily a lineage matter but merely a reference to a righteous person of the past so they used to because mashallah that Mary salam was a very devout worshiper so the mother of jesus salam, was a very devout worshiper and harun salam, was a very devout worshiper a prophet of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there was a resemblance in the amount of ibadah that they used to to do so she was linked to that this is maybe one of the stronger arguments if not the strongest argument to say this is actually not an argument rather an explanation as to what it means as for actually you know there's a lineage link there's a lineage link and um, there's also the claim that well you know harun was from one tribe and maryam alayhi salam was from a different tribe now here, the Quran must be making a mistake because Maryam was from this tribe, they said, and Harun being from Levi tribe. This is a mistake. No. The Quran does not make a mistake. Allah, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not make a mistake. Uh, this is not in reference to somebody else, Miriam, and this is Maryam, not at all. So, and in fact, Ibn Kathir, in his book, uh, Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya, in his history book, the beginning of the end, he said this is a long old argument that the Ahlul Kitab that they bring up from time to time, but it has been answered very clearly. And alhamdulillah, the answers are very, very simple, very straightforward. So there is no uh, misunderstanding concerning this. The strongest view is that reference to uh, Marim alayhi salam, to Harun alayhi salam in their, of course, from the righteous people and the, the way that she would be devoted. And, and, and that was it, so... Right. Who is the one who's talking, if you don't mind, to tell me? Uh, I, I don't remember his name to be completely honest with you. He was a imam that was on Islamic channel. So have you heard of this channel before? I don't know what channel you are talking about, but if you can give us the recording so we can add it to the videos here, that would be good. Let me, let me show you what your friend he did. Uh, yeah. You know the story of Kabul Ahbar when he came to uh, Aisha, and, Aisha and, and, he, and he told her, 
Aisha, you know, she he, Muhammad was not there. It says here, and this is hadith reported many times, and this is Sahih hadith. Hadathani Yaqub, qalathana ibn Aliya, blah, 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 blah. That, that uh, uh, and Muhammad ibn Sirin, uh, that Kaab, he came to Aisha and he says that his statement, Ya Ukhta Harun, he says, he is not Harun, the, the he cannot be Harun, the brother of Moses. Aisha, she said to him, you are a liar. And the prophet, he told the truth. He said, well, according to what I know, there's a 600 years beef between them. So as you see here, Aisha herself in the time of Muhammad, and she lived in the house of Muhammad, which means Muhammad never mentioned before that he don't mean literally that she is really the sister of Aaron, correct? Otherwise, why Aisha? She's accusing the guy to be a liar, correct? Yeah, just give me a second. I can see it on the screen now. Give me a second. And let me open it to you, actually, from Al Qurtubi. So you can, you know, you can have page number and etc. You know, better than. I will open uh, or Al Tabari, you, whatever you wish. This is the official government website of the kingdom. Actually, this is Ibn Kathir. This is Ibn Kathir. Mm -hmm. Let's go with Ibn Kathir first. You know? Let us see here. And, and, and while you do that, just to confirm um, from the Bible. Mary is from the tribe of Judah, Moses and Aaron from Levi, correct? Exactly. Here, okay. read with me carefully. It says, And Nakaban Kala in Nakaula Hoya Ukta Harun, Lay Sabi Haruna Achim Moses, Aka Kal, Aka at Lahu Aisha Kadept, Kal, Ya Omel Munin, In Kanan Nabiu Salahu Ali, you were Salama Kala, who for who are Alamu Akbar, where Illa for any Ajdu Baina Huma said to Ma at Usana. Kal, فسكتت في هذا في you know عائشة she was a mute uh -huh. so عائشة yeah. she accused the guy to be a liar for what saying for he's saying he is not really he cannot be the brother you know because there's 600 years between them right yeah that's true which, which means until this moment Muhammad never opened his mouth and then when uh, when Muhammad he came back and عائشة she told him what uh, Kabul Ahbar, he said, he's a Jew who became supposedly a Muslim. Muhammad, now he need to fix it, but it's too late. But look what happened. If we go to the Al Quran, we will find that according to the Quran, who is the father of Amran? Uh, sorry, Amran is the father of who? Uh, according to the Quran? Yeah. According to the Quran, is Maryam. Maryam, thank you very much. So Mary is the daughter of Amran, but Amran is sorry, the sorry. father of Moses. And Aaron. Sorry, let me just double check. Let me double check one second. No, no, you are right. You know, وَإِذْ قَالَتْ إِمْرَأَةُ وَإِمْرَانَ رَبِّي إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لَكَ مَا فِي بَطْنِي Chapter 3, verse number 35, you can open it. You do not need to look for it, I just give you the verse. No, no, yeah, I heard it, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so the, the uh, uh, Muhammad again, he, he is too late, he cannot fix it. And the reason for that, Muhammad, he heard that Aaron, he have her sister, her name literally, her name is Maryam. Not Mary, Mary, Maryam. All right? Maryam is really sister of Aaron. Muhammad, he heard that. So now suddenly he thought that Mary and Maryam is the same one. And Maryam is the sister of Aaron. And their father is the same father. Who is the name of the father of... Why the Jews? I mean, why the Christian? Even the name of the of, of Mary, father, they will change. Everything will change. I mean, come on. The, the book written 600 years before Muhammad. So Muhammad, he thought, thought that this is the same person. And even he called the name even wrong. It's Umram, not Umran. But because he did not know how to pronounce the Jewish name correctly, as usual. So, why they call it Imrat or Imran. So the wife of Imran... Who is, who is this woman? She is the mother of Mary. And the holy chapter now is called al Imran. And the chapter is talking about who? Talking about Moses, Aaron, and Mary. This is the family of Imran. <laughs> yeah, you know? And, and uh, you know, when the Muslim, they try, the answer they gave you is again a duct tape for mistakes of Muhammad. What do you think, Yaqub? Why, why you don't ask this guy, this gentleman who gave the answer in that channel, you know, to give me his Skype, I will call him. He don't need to call me. I will call him right now. What do you think? No, you, you see what, what I'm trying to... 
Okay, so the, there's two things going on at the moment. So the first thing is the guy who I called, he is a guy who comes on Islamic Channel, uh, a TV station in the UK. No Every problem. Day. He can oh, call okay. me. I can call him during the time he is doing his show. No problem. That okay, even that, gonna... that even would be better. So people who watch the TV, they will see. And people who they are on YouTube, they will see. And people will be the judge. Yeah, so I'll send you the, the number and the time so you can do that. I, I don't I don't call number. I have to call Skype. I don't you know I don't have a, uh, the phone to call. Uh, uh, yeah, so I use only Skype. You know these days because of the internet. I mean, who who need a, even a phone to call? You know, everything is for no, free. No, is, no, that's fine. I will I will reach out and get them to contact you through Skype. Also, there's a Islamic organization that I've been made aware of, and I've told them that they need to debate you, um, because otherwise, you know. It's not a good look for Islam. You know what I mean? Exactly. It doesn't look. And as you see, Muslims are leaving Islam left and right here. You know? Yeah. Each time yeah. we go in a debate with somebody, Muslims, they have no answer. They retreat. And it, you know, and the, the, the sheikhs are retreating because simply the cover up time is over. You know? Uh, and you know, when he said that uh, because uh, 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 what Harun was devoted, well, who is more devoted, Harun or Moses? Hmm? Uh, no, no, do you see? You, you're right, you're right. It doesn't make sense. He should call her the sister of Moses, why he said Harun. You know? Yeah. Why he mentioned her, then Harun. And who is the more important? You know? For, if for the, even for the Jews. Who is more important, Aaron or Moses? It's Musa, yeah. Yeah. So if I wanna if I wanna call them by the greatest the, the greatest person, I call him by the greatest. Well, the greatest at that time is Musa's, is not Aaron. You know. Mm -hmm. So even the answer is very silly and it doesn't make any sense. And why Muhammad he did not mention from the beginning? Well, you guys, okay, don't, isn't it the Muslim they say the Quran is made so clear? So why the Quran now here is not making it clear and causing confusion? Ya Ukhta Harun. And why the Jews, who they are Jews, and Jews, they are very tribal people, you know, they are tribe. They are, you know, even they look at each other differently based on the tribe. Mm -hmm. You know, they even discriminate each other based on tribe too. So why a person who don't belong to that tribe, they call her, oh, sister of Aaron. She is not even from there. You know? She have nothing to do with the tribe. So how suddenly she become from there? No, I understand what you're saying. I, I think what you're saying, what you're saying makes more sense. Well, I, cannot, uh, I won't well, say. Well, I hope my friend Muhammad soon you will leave Islam too. And uh, because if the Muslim, they keep uh, the Muslim sheikhs, they keep running away. And I am the one keep begging you, as you see, each time you call me, how many times already? Each time I, you call me, I said, why you don't bring me a sheikh, Yaqub? Uh -huh. You see, so, it's better It's better to get the one who can answer, to answer me from you, like copying from him to me, between us, you know, why Why do we need the middleman? That's it, uh, here we go. Uh, uh, deal with the guy, and I promise you, I will speak very nice to them, as long as they are people who respect themselves, you know? The same, like, well, you notice that the way I talk to Muslims is different than the person. If he is rude, I will be rude with him. Uh, have, have, have I been rude to you ever? No. Nope. Oh, you speak nice, I speak nice to you. I only be rude to you. So, uh, uh, and I'm sure they will be, you know, they will be uh, speaking nice too. Uh, they are sheikhs, supposedly, they should be. So, they are welcome. They can say their opinion. They can give their reference. And as you see, even Aisha, she accused the guy to be a liar. She did not say... Oh, okay, I will tell the, she said you are a liar. And what, and, and you don't say to a person you are a liar unless you are sure. Uh -huh. And that means he made her angry. And that means the answer he gave, it's an insult. He just told her, your prophet is false prophet. How in the world he made Miriam the sister of Aaron. And according to him, according to the Hadith, there is 600 years between them. Anything else, Yaqub? I gave you many things. I don't know. This is the only thing you asked him? You, you see, um, CP. Yeah. 
Um, I asked them a few questions. Okay. All right. Um, th this wasn't um, the, the most important one, as you can imagine, but I asked them some other questions where I where it doesn't make sense to me. Okay. Okay. Uh, the answers I got were not good. L let me just be very honest. What the you. question you gave them? Okay. Um, you, you know, there's a, a verse in the Quran that says um, uh, the 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 Jews say Uzair is the son of Allah. Exactly. While the Christians say the Messiah is the son of Allah. Uh -huh. uh, such are the baseless assertion. You, you know, I, Surah nine thirty, I think. Right. Yeah, Surah Surah Toba, Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Exactly. I, I said to them that. Um, Zayd isn't, I don't know any Jews who say this, you know, because uh, it's not in their scriptures. Right. Um, and I said, why, why would, why would the Prophet of Allah make such an assertion when we know the Jews never believe this? Um, and they told me that it was a certain sect of the Jews. Certain and, sect? First of all, if you read the Quran verse, it says, and the Jews, they say. Correct? There is no sect, and you're right, it's yeah. all the Jews. And you know, actually, not only that, some scholars they try to fix it. They say there was only one Jew, one Jew. But how it is one Jew, and the Quran says the Jews, Al Yahud. You know? So here, Muhammad again making another poku. He heard something very funny, very weird. There's no Uzair in the whole Bible, actually. You will not even find this name, Uzair. It doesn't exist. No, but he's a guy from the, yes, I, I know, Talmud, right? He's a, 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 one of the priests, sorry, not Talmud. He's no, no, the, you see the, the, in the translation, they put Ezra, but this is not Uzair. There's a huge difference between Ezra and Uzair. Mm. You see, so Arabic, Uzair. my friend, Yaqub, Arabic and Hebrew, they share the same letters. So there is no yeah. need to switch letters. Like if, if I say Muhammad, because, you, you know, in English, we don't have the letter eh, correct? Yeah, no. Okay, mm -hmm. so if the Jews, they have Uzair, it should be Uzair there. If this is the name, Imran, Imran, correct? Imran. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So there's no need to switch the letter, but there's no such a name. This name does not exist. Uh, uh, another example, in the Quran, uh, it says that the Christian and the Jews, they worship their rabbis and their monks. Yes, that's true. Mm -hmm. But we don't. That's false. You know, not a no. single Christian do that. You know, and this is this is a chapter nine, verse number thirty-nine. So, how in the world it says here that the Jews and the Christian they took their rabbis and their monks as their gods, arbaban, not as lords only, as gods, min dunillahi and wal masih. And if you speak Arabic, you know that this is grammatically wrong because you just said now they are worshiping their rabbis and their monks instead of Allah and the Messiah. So they should worship who? Only Allah and the Messiah. What kind of Arabic is this? And then the Muslim, they say, you are lying. It doesn't say that. Read it. It says, They took their rabbis. There's a website, islam.com, whatever, you know, Quran.com. Go there. You can move the, the, the mouse over the, the word one by one. And the, and the website will translate each one, each word alone. And you will see it says literally, they took their rabbis their monks as god or gods instead of allah and the messiah so what the verse here is saying they are worshiping their monks and their rabbis instead of worshiping allah and the messiah okay so, so here there's two mistakes number one it's not a mistake it's a lie we don't worship our monks nobody worship a monk and nobody worship a, a rabbi and that's a big fat lie. The whole Bible says you know. your God is one. Your God is one. Your God is one. Your God is one. So how in the world anyone would worship a monk or a rabbi or a bishop? Nobody. We highly respect them, yes. We highly appreciate them, yes. Especially the church father. But we don't worship any. Can I, can I tell you the way it's been told to me? Okay. So... The first part of the verse, 
um, the way it's been explained to me is that when it says that you, the Christians and the Jews, have taken the rabbis and the priest as gods besides Allah, um, we've understood this, that, um, that they would make something that is haram, halal, and something that is halal, haram. For example, uh, we would often quote um, uh, circumcision, you know, it's uh, something that people should do. Mm. But, uh, but it's it's not something that Christians do because their priests told them that uh, you don't have to do this anymore. So so stuff like this is what's being referred to as, as um, obeying their rabbis and monks. First of all, this is mean uh, Muhammad or the Quran oh, author. He used the wrong words because he should say then they obey. I mean, there's a million words in Arabic instead of Arbaban. Arbaban means they're gods. Right? Arbaban means God, Rub, Rabbi. Yeah. Okay. No, no, this is so he is using the wrong word, and this is a lie. And secondly, uh, first of all, not all the Christians agree about circumcision if it is necessarily or not. And uh, 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 you know the uh, the the Bible never denied that circumcision is there, and even Jesus himself he did it. So. Where is he was circumcised? Muhammad never, Muhammad never been circumcised. So, who said, well, Show me, I will give you 10, 10, 10,000 years to show me Muhammad being circumcised. What do you think? Yeah, you, you're probably right, actually. Because, yeah. he so, so Muhammad is a, is a hypocrite, he is making circumcision as a big deal when he himself never circumcised. Why he never circumcised, you know. Does it make sense? Isn't he a, a person who claimed that he is following uh, Moses, the step of Moses? And he claimed that he is following the steps of Jesus, and he is uh, claiming that he is following the steps of the Torah, and then he himself is never being circumcised. And you know, the Bible speaks about circumcision of the, of the spirit or the heart before more important than circumcision of uh, the, the private part. The private part circumcision was a very reason, like the Muslims now, uh, you ask them, why you pray in the direction of the Kaaba? They say, so Allah, he said to us, so Allah can recognize you. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. The Jews, they have their own tattoo. <laughs> Let us say. <laughs> they have their own way to know who is a Jew, who is not. They used to kidnap their children. How they knew is the person is a Jew or not? Nobody does circumcision except them. So when they kidnap your child, and then after 50 years later, you are a Jew, you know that you are a Jew. Because simply you are circumcised, so there is you know there is a reason for circumcision. I'm not saying this is the only reason. I'm just saying you, <laughs> this is a way uh, to be recognized too as a nation who worship the true God. But it's not what make you a believer is circumcision. And here you see this is a contradiction for the Quran. Is it true that Allah He is the one who cursed, the one who changed, uh, uh, you know the the way Allah He created people? Mm -hmm. Okay, so those who uh, who do that? Uh, Allah, He cursed them. Okay, I, I, how in one hand I, you I, say? I know, I know what you're talking about, but um, I know the verse you're referring to. Sorry, but uh, let me just say this. Yeah. You know that the Quran says that. Um, uh, yeah, it says that, you know, uh, everything that the Prophet says is just a revelation revealed, you know? So to Najm, um, sorry, let me just find the reference for you. Yeah, what what, 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 what does this have to do with, uh, with our, you know, that, I mean, the, the question? That the, the point I'm trying to say is that, um, yes, you're right, that the Quran does say that, you know, uh, Nabi yeah. Christ is the one who okay. mutilates himself. Yeah, but, uh, but, uh, because, uh, but the Prophet told us that Allah says that you know we should circumcise because we find circumcision in the hadith correct exactly this is a, and this is a you know something that the prophet said and everything that the prophet says comes from allah you know what i mean and if you refer to uh 53 verse 4 sorry sort of 53 ayah 4 okay uh that that tells you that um nor does he speak of his own whims it is only revelation sent to him so everything that he speaks is a uh, revelation in this sense. Yeah, but uh, but here you know you see here we have a problem now. Uh, 
who is the one who made people change the way Allah made you look like? Shaitan or Allah? When you, wait, for example, you cut your hair or... If you so cut, you if you do anything, any change to your body, you know, anything. Mm -hmm. Who is the one who do that? Isn't it, isn't it the Quran say this is Shaitan? Mm -hmm. Is this correct? In chapter 4, yeah. verse 119? Yeah. Okay. So if somebody make a tattoo, this is from Satan. If somebody put an earring, this is from Satan. If somebody make a hole, this is from Satan. If somebody made a wig, this is from Satan. If somebody, if somebody, if somebody. So how circumcision became Islamic now? Mm -hmm. Okay, because uh, like I said, the in the hadith, you know, anything the prophet says is revelation revealed. It so doesn't matter, but this is a contradiction. If the one who changed the way Allah, he made you look like. I mean, Muhammad, he cursed even women for taking hair from their face. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So which one is big? Taking hair from your face or cutting a piece of your penis? Which one really changed the way Allah created you? If a woman, she take hair from her face, she is not changing anything. It's hair. Okay, can I can I ask you something? Are you trying to look? I I know I know it, it doesn't make sense in, in this sense. I I I understand, but um, you know, in Islam, we we submit to God. You know, um, for for example, there are things that I would believe in your religion. It just doesn't make sense. It, it, it for example, Jesus being born from a virgin. It it doesn't add any more to the story. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it makes sense only in Christianity and Islam doesn't make sense because um, because why what, what is the what is, what is the purpose of this uh, this statement nothing in Islam why, why does it mean something in Christianity sorry because Jesus have a father and the father is God who is the one who made Mary have Jesus God mm -hmm. who is the one who made my mother have me my father Correct. So if he if he was born to Joseph, are you saying that he could not have been the son of God? If he is born of Joseph, then he is a son of Joseph. That's it. But he can't still also be the son of God. Is it's not about saying? can't. It's he is not a son of God anymore. He is a son of Joseph. Either he is a son of Joseph or he is not. If he is son of Joseph, then he is son of Joseph. That's it. He is the son of Mary. Well, right. Yeah, but Mary, she did not have him from sexual relationship. Mary, she is, a, she is the vessel of the word of God. So Jesus was born through a human, but he is not even from Mary. This is why when the Messiah, he said to the Jews, what, what say you of, uh, of the Christ? They said he is the son of David. He said, well, because this is the understanding of the Jews. And even the Bible called Jesus many times the son of David, you know. But Jesus, he understand, like, you know, we spoke about Mary. You know, she is from the tribe, etc. Now, Jesus himself is a son of David, uh, based in the lineage of how he's born. Okay, that's fine. But literally, he is not. David is where, where and Jesus is where. But Jesus himself, he corrected the Jews about their understanding. He said, what, what say you of the Messiah, of a Christ? He said, he said to them, who is son is he? This is in Matthew chapter 22. They said, well, he is a son of David. He said to them, uh -huh. well, then how David, by his spirit, call him the Lord Jehovah said, for he said, the Lord Jehovah said to my Lord, sit at the right of my hand until I place your enemies under your feet. If therefore David called him the Lord Jehovah, how is he his son and no man could give an, him an answer, and no man dared again from that day to question him. So, uh, here you see the one who is giving us the explanation. This is not Peter, this is not John, this is Jesus himself speaking. So, who is, who is, he is son of who? Is he from David? No, he's not. Even David had nothing to do with Jesus, because David, he called him God. Before Jesus was born from Mary. This is why Jesus said, before Abraham I am. 
So if, Abra if, if Jesus is from Mary, well, how in the world did Abraham he worship him and he saw his day? So obviously, mm -hmm. obviously Jesus, the, the, the birth of Jesus, my friend, had nothing to do with the existence of Christ. The birth no, of no, Jesus I mean, is about the birth of the flesh. And the Father, and the Father is the one who is our God, who sent his only Son, the Word of God, and through Mary become a human. He took, the Bible says, he humbled himself, he took the form of an, uh, the image of a man. But why? Nobody can see God and live in the, in the way he is, literally, you know? That's why even in your Quran, Muhammad trying to copy that, he said when, when Moses, he went to the fire, he, he saw a fire in the bushes, right? And this is a story from the Bible, okay? And the Quran says, Who was in the fire and who is around it? Do you know? Who was in the fire? Who was in the fire? Chapter 27, verse number 8. Sir, one second, put up. Surah 27, 8. Okay. Okay, blessed is he who is the fire and whatever is around it. Glory be to Allah, the sustainer of all the universe. Yeah, what do you think? Who was in the fire? And who was around came, it? He was called blessed is whoever is at the fire, whoever is around it, and exalted is Allah, Lord of the world. I don't know. Maybe well, Musa was around the fire for sure. Yeah, okay, Musa was around the fire, but who is inside the fire? No, there, there, there's no one around it. You, you can't say Allah is inside the fire. Why not? What you're going to... Why? Why would you say that? Okay, look what happened now. You see, I'm just asking you to see how how confused Muslims are, because when 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 uh, when Musa he approached the tree. And the voice of Allah came from the tree and he told him, I am Allah. Is that correct? Yes, it does say that. Okay, what kind of a tree was that tree? Blast tree, is that correct? Yes. Why it was a blast? Because Allah spoke through it. Is Allah there or not? He spoke through it. Is Allah there or not? I, I don't know how to answer that question, to be honest. I don't know the answer. Okay, let me help you. You just say, it, you say Allah, He say spoke, that. Allah, He spoke through it, correct? Yes. Does that make it a microphone? You can see it like this, in a way. Okay, sort of and this microphone have a speaker? I, I, I don't know the nature of it. You know what I mean? You know, I'm just trying to make it close to understand, right? Okay. <laughs> but if if you read me if you read me with my friend Yaqub, yeah. if you read the verse carefully, it says, "Falamma ataha nudiya min shati il wadi al ayman fi al buqa al mubaraka min al shajara an ya Musa an Allahu Rabbul Alamin." Nudiya, he was called from the tree in the holy spot, in the holy ground. That's why Allah He told him to take off his shoes. Correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So. If it's the voice of Allah, the voice of Allah can come from the sky. He do not need a tree. Okay, no, you see, you see, this is where where I sometimes uh, lose you here, um, because the voice is coming from it, where? The voice coming no, from no, where? If it came from the sky, you would say, why did it not come from the ground? No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying why not because you know the Bible mentioned that when Jesus was baptized. A voice from heaven came and he said, this is my only begotten son. Mm -hmm. So God, he speaks this way, why not? But why this time, why, 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 hold on, why, you see Muhammad is copying the Jews again, but he do not know why, and this is why you do not know why. Because if Islam is a religion and the Quran says, وَفَصَّلْنَاهُ تَفْصِيلًا and we made the Quran in the great details, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, if the Quran is the one explain itself, how come a very simple question no Muslim can answer? Okay, so now was Allah in the tree or the voice of Allah is in the tree? 
Here, if you say the voice of Allah is in the tree, that means the Muslim is separated between Allah and his voice. So, no, not necessarily. Why? Because Why? The voice, of, the voice of Allah. What is the, what is the voice? What is the voice is? It's your communication that comes out of your... No, the, the voice is a wave, right, of energy. Sure. Okay. So this wave, it travel and reach the ear or the one who can hear it, which means not all voices we can hear depend on our, uh, the frequency, correct? Mm -hmm. Like those can hear things, we hear different things. So uh, when, when Allah, he spoke from the tree, Moses, he did not hear the voice coming from anywhere except from the tree, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. He did not hear it from behind the tree, from the top of the tree, from beside the tree, from the tree. Are we are we correct? You're correct, yeah. Okay. That means the voice is coming from there and Allah must be there then. Because if Allah is in the heaven, why the voice is not coming from heaven? Who need the fire anyway? Who need a tree? What is the point of this tree and what the point of this fire? Do you know? I, I don't know. No. Right. Muhammad is again copying a story. In Islam, does not make any sense. It doesn't make sense. So, so why, why does that happen? Tell me. You know, for us, uh, God, he appeared in many ways. To, to, to He came to Abraham as a man. He came to Moses as, as a fire. So God, he appeared in the way he wished. The Muslim cannot explain that. They don't dare to say, well, this is fire. You know, this is God. This is the light of God. They don't dare because they are confused. They are stealing the story from somebody else. Okay, who is, what is this fire? I ask you from the beginning, who is, who, why it says, blessed is the one who is in the fire. You said to me, this is going to be God, correct? I, I'm not going to deny this. Muslims, I don't think any Muslim will say that. For okay, but why, why, who is the one saying, blessed is the one in the fire? Allah is saying it. Why Allah says, blessed is the one in the fire? Allah can bless whom he wills. No, no, right? no, no, this is not a question now. Why he is saying that? I mean, there's a point, you see. If you have a God, he, this God, he is not a fool who speak as like blah, 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 you know, like somebody lost his mind, right? He says things for a reason. Mm -hmm. Do I agree? That things are said for a, for a reason? Yeah. Okay, so... Blessed is the one who is in the fire. And if Muhammad, he failed to tell you who is in the fire, then there's no point of this verse. Because this is the heart of the verse. When he approached the fire, what happened? He, he was told, him. yeah, he was told, blessed is the one in the fire. This is the first message this God he gave to Moses. And then the Muslim, they said to us, we do not know what does that mean. How we miss that part? Who is inside the fire? We don't know. So you, as a Christian, would say that Allah was in the fire, right? I'm not saying that. I did. The whole story is a corruption taken from the Bible, and it became funny because Muhammad is adding his own falafel to it. That's why you Muslim, you have no idea what, what does that mean. Here we go. I'm asking you, and you check all Islamic scholars. Nobody have an answer. They start guessing. Some they see angels. What the angels are doing there? <laughs> Dancing in the side of the fire, you know. First of all, isn't it the fire? Isn't it the fire is a sign of hell? Yeah. Okay. Why, so why Allah is why, in the why 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 this well why, why this fire is a blast? So what did you say? Fire is the sign of hell. Is that what you said? Yeah. Isn't it the Quran says that Naru Jahannam? The second we no, no. the second we go and we we we, we look for the word. Nor, huh? Nor, we will find yes, yes, nor is is something, but, huh? Yes, but but it, it just it's not just for for hellfire. You know this, right? It's for what then? Fire is used for many things for cooking. Uh, I don't know why. Okay, so who was who was being cooked inside the fire of the tree of Allah? I, I really don't understand how you're linking these two. I'm, I'm not, I'm, you see, I'm trying to understand how Muslim confused are. I'm trying to find out this fire is for what reason? 
What is this reason? Is that I, a, I don't know. Is that a real fire or fake fire? It's, it's a real fire. Real fire, wonderful. So, but there is somebody is inside the fire, correct? No, no, no. Allah is speaking through the fire. Okay, guys. Allah is speaking through the fire, but doesn't say in front of you. Blessed is the one is in the fire, the one. There's one person is inside the fire, one. Those around it. Okay, I see what you're saying here. Um, mm, no clue. No clue. Mm. So, how we can solve this crowd story? See, Muhammad, he copied from the Bible, but the Bible story is different. You know, the, the, there's, no, there's no fire burning in the bush. There is a fire, but there's nothing is burning mm. really. And here we find that there is something strange. Muslims cannot explain because it's a theft. So blessed is the one who is in the fire. This is the first message Allah delivered to Moses. If it's not important, then he should not say it. This, the first thing he said to him, this is, you know, I'm Allah. Okay. Did, did, did he say I am Allah? Yeah, I say that. Okay. How the voice of Allah is saying I am Allah? It's like, for example, um, mm. say that you're speaking in a big room, okay, and there's a mic, there's a microphone and speaker, all right, and in one end of the room, people can hear only through the speaker and they can't see you, mm -hmm. and you say, "Hello, everyone, I'm Christian Prince." Okay, the speaker, I am Christian Prince, but everyone knows, is not the speaker, but it's the actual person speaking. All through right, it. you know. Okay, but saying? let us let us let us think about it this way. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, I am, and I am because I am not seen, and people do not know um, they are they are listening to who, right? Then, mm -hmm. uh, in order to recognize, you have to say, "Well, I am Allah," right? Mm -hmm. So people can recognize you, okay? But what happened here that Allah already He says, "I am Allah," and then right away, and He is the voice is coming from the fire. The voice from the fire says, "I am Allah," correct? From the fire. Yeah. Yep, that's true. Mm -hmm. Okay, so from the fire, the voice came in saying, I am Allah, and then the blessed is the one who is in the fire. So who is in the fire? No, the voice that was coming out of the fire was saying, I am Allah. Okay, mm -hmm. and and the blessed, the one is in the fire. So who is in the fire? Honestly, I don't know who this one is. Can we? My, my, my friend, let, 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 let me help you. So if the angel Jibreel was in the fire, then the voice is not coming from Allah, it's coming from Jibreel, correct? Correct. Okay. So when Allah He says, I am Allah, and then He says, and the blessed the one who is in the fire. So who's in the fire? No, yeah, okay. No, no. I, I see I see exactly what you're saying. But you see that the problem here is if I say that is Allah in the fire, then what we're saying is that Allah is a person in a way. He's not a person then? He's not? You know, when you say he's a person, what does that mean? Because he go inside as a creation? Sorry, no, no, I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, do, do Allah go inside as a creation? I don't think so, no. Okay, so how your prophet, he says, Allah, he come down every third part of the night from the seventh heaven to the lowest heaven. Mm -hmm. How Allah, he come down. Actually, we can use the Quran even for better evidence because mm -hmm. they can say to you, this is weak, even though this is Bukhari uh, or Muslims. But isn't it, isn't it the Quran says, uh, after Allah, he finished the earth, he went up to heaven. al arsh istawa yeah, then he rose over the throne. Yes. Okay, he rose. That means he was where? He was down, right? You, you see, the way that um, I've been taught when I was uh, in my Islamic studies huh. is that um, this verse is in reference to uh, his majesty. 
you know so, doesn't matter but did he rose did he rose or he did not is it like fake ri rising or it's uh, real no it's like for example saying that um, you know when when the queen of england dies and her son takes over he rose to the throne no you see here we are talking about the act and the action so allah he was in the process of a creation he was down uh, chapter as an example chapter 13 verse number two it says allah is he who raised the heaven without any pillars that you can see is firmly established on the throne this is the muslim translation the the, the arabic it says Thumma stawa al -arsh. and then he rose up to the sky they lie in the translation and the arabic in front of you so where he was oh, yeah. before he finished the work he was not on the throne do we agree on that he was not in the throne chapter chapter 11 verse number two yeah and we can so, uh, find no, just reading yeah okay he was subject to sunday okay allah is he who raised the heavens without any pillars that you can see is firmly established on the throne he has subjugated the moon sun and the moon each what, one was what translation you're reading yeah what, what translation you're reading I'm reading what you're putting on the screen. Actually. All of them, all of them they are lying. You see, here we go. Look, none of them saying he rose. It says here he took control over the realm. What is where? Where is the throne? The throne is gone. I don't see the throne. Look at this guy. I'm, I'm, I'm reading your screen, actually. Yeah, I changed the translation translator. You see, uh -huh. uh, uh, the throne is gone, and you know the, the Muslim translator translation is really horrible. They are trying to fix it uh, to 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 what Muhammad is saying. The word Arish. The word Arsh means throne. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but where is the throne? I didn't so see it. Do you, you see saying, it? So why are you saying it's so that? Okay, I just changed. Okay, I just changed the translator. Look what happened. This is a translation of Biktar, Muhammad Biktar. It says, which is different from all of them. Allah is who raised up the heaven without visible support, then uh -huh. mounted the throne. Mounted or he mounted himself on the throne. What mounted the throne? The throne is there. So, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so he so, mounted himself on the throne. Okay. So where Allah was before he finished his work, he was not on the throne. Correct. Correct. Okay. No, where, no, what? Mm -hmm. What? Sorry. Where he was. Before the creation, you mean, right? No. No. Okay. Uh, he is creating now. He's working. Creating the earth according, according to Islam, uh, uh, let us let us uh, analyze it a little bit. Uh, which one Allah creates first, the earth or the heaven? Okay, now now okay. No, no, we will not make it complicated. Just a short answer, so we can understand this this verse here. The last thing Allah He made, the last thing Allah He made, it was the stars. Correct? Do you agree? Yes, I, I know you're going to show me another verse where okay. the water is different. No, yeah. just focus with me. I'm not going to show you a contradiction now. This is not my interest. Uh, uh -huh. But the last thing, in, according to that, that chapter, the last thing Allah, he did, he created the stars, correct? Uh, correct, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then what he did? Then he went up to heaven, correct? Yes. Okay, that means Allah wasn't in heaven. <laughs> and then when Allah he rose it says even the word rose right so when he rose that means he went from down to up correct mm -hmm. okay so he when he went from down to up that means he went through his creation up and down so Allah is inside his creation Even the hadith says, they ask Muhammad, what was there before Allah creation? He says, where, where was Allah before he creation? He says, there was nothing. But before he creation, created any creation, let us read this hadith here. Uh, I said, Messenger of Allah, where was our Lord before he created his creation? He said he was above the cloud, below which was air, and above which was air and water. Do you see it? I'll just uh, give a second while you screen. 
Okay. So. Sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, there's a big delay here. But yes, you know this this hadith you're referring to. I have heard of it before. Mm. Uh, well, while this loads up, I want to reread it again. For sure, I heard it. Um, okay. So, okay. So what we establish is that Allah is within His creation. Okay. Inside His creation. So what is the problem that Allah is inside the tree? Why Muslim they have difficulty? What is the problem now? Here we go. He is he is, he is in the yeah. cloud above air and down him air and he is on the top of the water. So what was the problem? Muslims are confused and they are they are really uh, they are first they are terrified. You know, Muslims when they speak about their God and their religion, they are terrified. Because Islam is based on terrorism. When you, you know, when you, uh, if you are uh, don't do that, Allah will hit you with the hammer in the grave. He will send you two angels, and they will hit you with the hammer. They ask you, what is your religion? If you don't say Islam, they will hit you with the hammer. If you don't recite Quran, the scorpion will go inside your anus. Ninety-nine dragons will go inside your anus if you are in the grave. Terror, terror. You know, Muhammad using terror and everything in order to make people not to think and not to ask questions. But when we ask the Muslims any simple question, you will find they are in trouble and they are afraid to answer because they might get killed even for an answer they give. They might get tortured. They might get rejected. When Mimi Hijabi asked uh, Yasser Qadi and he was his teacher and he invited him and they visit each other and they go together in the car and they go from country to country together and he called him Ustad and Sheikh. Suddenly because he gave him the wrong answer, what happened? Suddenly he is an idiot, <laughs> he's a liar, he's a fake, he's a deceiver. When we read the Quran or read the Hadith, that Allah, he come down every night in the third part of the night, and he come to the lowest heaven, and all the Muslims agree that this is a Sahih Hadith. As you see, this is Sahih Bukhari, and this is Sahih Muslim. Can they deny it? Can they say this is not true? Muhammad said, that when it is the last or the, th the last third uh, of the night, our Lord, the blessed, the superior, descend. Does it say, Yaqub, does it say they are the word descend or I'm making things up? No, it's, it's true. Mm -hmm. Okay. When I say I descend, that's I'm moving from point A to point whatever, B, right? Yes. That's mean Allah, he move. Let us take, let us take notes. Allah, he moved, correct? Mm -hmm. Allah is moving where? Inside his creation. Because heaven number seven and heaven number one is his creation, isn't it? It is, yeah. Okay. So when the Quran says that the share of Allah, the share of Allah, the size of it is the size of the earth and the heaven. Okay, why the chair is so big if Allah is so small? Allah, as you see, He go inside between them. He have to be smaller. You cannot go inside something unless you are smaller. And if Allah is moving and He descend, doesn't that make God physical? I guess you're right. Yeah, He is physical. Mm hmm and Allah, he descend even in a certain time. So he work with the law of physics. He have a timing, mm -hmm. right? He have a time for his yeah. trip. He have a time to come back. So he come where? He come to the lowest heaven. So he have a limit where he stop. All right. Allah, he come down every night. How in the world that can be a prophet of God saying such a statement? I want to ask you, Yaqub, and I want to be honest, and I'm used to you to be honest with me. How many third mm. part of the night we have in this earth? Do we have one time zone? You live in you live in, no. in you live in London right now, right? Yeah. Okay. So do we have me and you? We have the same third part no. of the night. Well, based on this, Allah never leave anywhere. He cannot go. He cannot go back. 
because he had to keep coming up, down, going up, coming down, coming up, coming down, coming up. Unless Muhammad is teaching the earth is flat and there's only one time zone and here we come that in that time. Do we agree? Yeah, I agree. Otherwise, it's mm -hmm. going to be hilarious that this is God himself. He has to come down every third part of the night. And you know, the Muslims, they say to us, why God, he need to send his son in order to forgive your sin? Can't he forgive your sin without any of this? But who said first who need? Who said we have to? Who said he should do? God, he loved his, because God, he loved the world, the Bible says, he sent his only begotten son. So it was because he loved us, not because he have to. Here, Allah, he have to do the work by himself. He have to come down. And what is the purpose of the mission? Tell me, Yaqub, help me. Is to, you mean the purpose of Jesus, right? No, no, the purpose of this hadith here. Allah, he come down every third part of the night. What is the purpose? To forgive sins. No, no. Be carefully. Is there anyone who evokes me? Exactly. Is this is the purpose. You, you need to know who is. <laughs> You know, he is coming to ask, hey, who who is here? No. You know, who is invoking me? Right? I, so, I, know, I know the hadith, my friend, but you see, uh, I, I don't want to sound like someone who's making excuses, you know? No, 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 you can make excuses, no problem. You know, we are we are, we are having a conversation okay. and you, you are being the Muslim yeah. and I'm being the Christian, so it's fine, it's okay. Yeah, but but that's not my job. But but what I'm saying is that what is being explained here from my, the way I've been taught, okay? Okay. When I was studying is that um yes for sure you can understand it as the earth being flat because for sure reading this this is the way you would understand it mm. anyone would but the purpose of this hadith is to show that or to emphasize that allah has so much love and care for his people that he would um uh, try his best to communicate with them you know just like the way that <clears throat> you said that god sacrificed his own son for us similar in this light but look what See you what did I mean? look what you did Yahoo. Mm -hmm. you just say mm -hmm. that your prophet is lying making a statement is not a true because allah he can do that same thing without yeah. going down anywhere there's no need to say mm -hmm. allah he descend there's no need to say even to where he said to the lowest heaven he gave name of location correct yeah he gave, he gave the name of the timing so and he used the word descent so how that became suddenly a metaphorical and did your prophet and the campaign in the time of Muhammad understood it this way? No one. No, no, you're right, yeah. So the Muslim today, in order to escape a question which is embarrassing, they try to give it an answer which had nothing to do with the purpose of this verse or this hadith is saying. And Allah, he come down. Why he need to come down anyway? Can't Allah, he ask the question from the seven heaven? No, but you see, okay, I understand what you're saying. Um, believe me, I understand. I, I have many doubts. Okay, let me ask you this question. All right. Um, is, is relevant to this uh, point. Um, you call God Yahweh, right? Mm. Okay. Um, you don't call, I mean, you're, you're an Arab Christian. This mm. is what I mean. Hmm. Do you call you call God Allah? Do you? Or Allah no, this is the you? this is after the the Muslim occupation. They've been forced. Mm -hmm. They've been forced through centuries. Imagine if ISIS occupy your town. In one day, everybody in town they will see Allah. Otherwise, you die. You know the Christian. They've been yeah. tortured. They've been humiliated. They've been treated like dogs and donkeys. Even if you go and open the book of Ibn Kathir, do you know what the Church of Al Qiyamah, which means the, the Church of Resurrection, called Umama? You know what Umama mean? No. Garbage. Why? Because the Muslim they close our holy church in Jerusalem and they make it a dumpster for garbage. So it's called Kanisatul Qumama. Al Qumama. So when you say you call God Are you are you sure, sorry? Because I, I this is in Jerusalem, correct? Yes. The the, the place okay. uh uh yeah. Uh, uh, because the, the story that I've been told, uh, sorry for interrupting, uh, was that um, the dumpster was actually um, there before the Muslims came and the Muslims cleaned it up. 
Oh, no, no, my friend, this is this. You know, we know, you know, the pact of Amar. You know, the pact of Amar. This is not true. You know, this is no. And secondly, uh, the Arab they came after the Christians. Do you think really the Christian they will call it such a name? Why the Muslims are using that name? Why the Muslims are using that name? If this is not what the Christian call it, do the Christian call it the place of garbage? No. No, of course. So the Muslims is the one who gave it. This is an Arabic name. Why? Because they shut down the church, mm -hmm. and most Christian cannot go inside it. And even until now, the keys of the church is in the hand of a Muslim family. In case you do not know, until now. Yeah. And the I Jews are and the, and the Jews until now they are siding with the Muslims in order to humiliate the Christians. The Jews they can take the, the this uh, this uh, this uh, uh, key from the, this family and say to them you have no business. They are the one controlling Jerusalem. But until now, they refuse to take anything the Muslim control of our holy places. Until now, the Muslim control it because the Jews, they are doing that on purpose in Israel. And I'm talking about Israeli. Until now, they side with the Israeli, with, with, the, with the Muslims. Until now, through, through centuries, they did not change. They always side with Muslims against the Christians. But it's okay. For us, that's fine. We are not people who worship stones. And we are not the one who worship churches. Our God is holy and he is living God. But look what happened now. When the Muslim they try to answer, they try to find any excuse. When Allah He come down, and Allah move between the Muslim, they try to find a metaphorical answer. But this is not what Muhammad meant, and all the Sahaba and the companion, this is how they understood it. And then if we go, your God or Muhammad, Allah. When he says that Allah, he will come to you in a shape other than the one which you know. Was Muhammad speaking of metaphorical or you will see him for real? This is your, yes, the hadith that's referring to judgment day, correct? Huh? The judgment day hadith, correct? The one yes, doesn't judgment. matter, doesn't matter. Allah, he changed his shape and he come to you in a shape other than the one which you know, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when Allah He have a shape and then He changed a different shape, will his shape mean what? She shape mean physical and space, correct? Yeah, it's not a three D uh, illusion. All right, you're right. I'm not going to say this is metaphorical. This is correct. Yeah. Um, so as you see, even so, Allah the way He is, He is physical anyway, and He have hands, and the Muslims agree, correct? Yeah, yeah. And He have foot. Mm -hmm. You have a shin. So Allah, he have a physical shape. So why the Muslims have a problem to explain to us who is Allah? Because they are terrified. So going back to zero, who was in the tree? Yeah. The Muslim can't answer. Who is in the fire? They don't dare to answer. Who is going to come down? They say Allah knows best. How Allah, he rose in the chair? Don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> so, you, you Muslims, you worship a God. He is unknown for you in every aspect. You know nothing about him except his name. And he have hands. Good luck with that. Who is your God? Ahu? You don't know. Hmm. You, have nothing, you have no idea who is your God. Oh, what you know, his name is Allah. What, is, what Allah mean? You have no idea. Why Allah have a shape? You have no idea. Why Allah even changed his shape? You have no idea. And okay, Allah now he changed his shape. And what happened to the first shape? Did he burn it? Did he hang it on the closet? But but but, but why does it matter if we know the, the, the essence of God? You, you can't tell it matter, God. it mattered to know you worship who? You are worshiping unknown God. This is an ancient God. You see, when the Muslim when you say to them that Allah Al is the word God, La is the moon God. They say to us, well, we don't worship the moon god. Okay, I will go with you. But the name of your god is the moon god name. And Muhammad is hijacking the moon god name of the Arab. Let me ask you, Yaqub, I will make it very simple for you. Mm -hmm. when, when Abraham, he saw the sun, he said, this is my god, this is Akbar. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Why he called it Akbar? The greatest. Uh, Akbar is not the greatest. Akbar means bigger. Give me one second, sir. Let me just find that verse. Give me a second. You will notice that Abraham, he did not call the moon Akbar. 
he called the son Akbar. Correct? Um, sorry, let me just find the verse. This is chapter 6, verse number 78. Okay. So 6 was... Uh, uh, you can read from verse so number 76, 77, 78. Okay, thank you. When he saw the sun coming, he said, This is my God, this is Akbar. Akbar. Akbar is not the greater. Akbar means bigger. Same time, Abraham, based on this verse, this is to show you the, the, the childless uh, book of God. Abraham, according to this story, He's acting as if he never saw the sun before. So the first thing he saw, when the night came, he saw a planet. Not a star, a planet. Kaukab is a planet. Mm -hmm. Anything in the sky, actually, they call it Kaukab, which is a planet. He said, this is my Lord. Okay, but why he is saying, this is my Lord? Which one? I mean, there's millions of them there. Which one? He saw one, he said, this is Akbar, okay. Uh, th sorry, he didn't say Akbar, this is my Lord. Then when he saw the moon, he said, this is my Lord. And this is the one I worship. And the same as what happened with the planet or this star, when he disappeared, he says, I love not the things that set. So what the reason Abraham, he abandoned this God? Because he disappeared. Uh -huh. Then he will start worshiping the moon. But look what happened. When the night came, he saw a star, he worshiped the star. And then when he saw the moon uprising, he said, this is my Lord. Uh -huh. And then he, the moon disappeared. Then when the, he saw the sun, he said, this is Akbar. And he okay. called it Akbar as mean, which means it is the bigger than all of those. And if you want to say it is the greater, no problem. I will go with that. And when he said, he said, I don't like those who said, again, the same game, the same stupid thing. Do you think really Abraham, when he is doing those things, he never saw yet that the stars disappear and the moon disappear and the sun disappear? What is this excuse? He saw it already, right? Yes. Okay, so this is a very funny story. Now, how come this guy, he don't accept a God who disappear, but he accept a God who never appeared to him? Did Allah appear to Abraham ever in Islam? No. Okay, so how come he don't like the one who disappear, but he worship the one who never even appear? Mm -hmm. Stupid story. Now here Muhammad, he hijacked the name of Abraham from the Jews. If we ask the Muslim what Abraham mean, they do not know. What is Ishmael mean? They do not know. What the Messiah mean? They do not know. What 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 Yaqub? Your name is Yaqub. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. They do not know. This is why the that he was making fun of the Christian in his debate. He says, <laughs> Your God was wrestling. Your God was wrestling with the Jacob in the Bible. How that can happen? But the second we ask the Muslims what the word Israel mean, they do not know. Mm -hmm. Israel mean the one who wrestled with the angel of God or with God. The one who struggled with God, the one who wrestled with God. So they don't like the story, but they accepted the name, which means they accepted the story by accepting the name. Why? Because Muhammad, you do not know what the name mean. What, what Gabriel mean? They do not know. Okay, what Israel mean? They do not know. Okay, what Ishmael mean? They do not know. So what do you know? Nothing. Muhammad is a person hijack every god in the corner. He came to the Sabian. The Sabian, they are people who worship stars. Is it true that the people at the time of Muhammad, they call him Sabi? They call him Sabi? Yeah. Who, so, who called him? The Arab, they call him Sabian. I know they called him Majnoon. I know they called him. No, they call him Sabi too. I do not know this. But why would they call him that? Because he was a Sabi and claiming to be Sabi at that time. 
What do you mean he's claiming to? Okay, let me see. Okay, here we go. If we go in the Quran, did Muhammad he promise the Sabi and to go to heaven? Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Where is the Sabi and they believe in the God of Abraham? <laughs> the Sabians. I don't know who this group of people are, to be honest with you. They are, they but, are, uh, they are the, the, the people of Iran, the north of Syria, the north of Iraq. Those are the, the Yazidi, the, uh, you know. How in the world those became people of Allah? People of, people of Abraham, sorry. They believe in one God? Doesn't matter. No, they believe in many gods, actually. They believe in angels. They have angels. Mm -hmm. Those angels, they have ranks. And they are the one who created. There's like, there is ranks. There's angels who create. And there's angels who do work to take care of the creation. You can read their book. It's called Kenza Rabba. Kenza Rabba. And actually, if you read if you read Kenza Rabba, the book, mm -hmm. you will find that is Muhammad is copying the book of Kenza Rabba, trying to make Quran like it. You know, if we go to Kenza Rabba, okay, let me show you. Give me a second. Uh, here we go. This is the book of Kenza Rabba. I will put it for you on the screen. Mm -hmm. Let me open it. Take a bit of time to open. Okay, this is Kenza Rabba. Let us see how we can move it. We have a, the book, it's called Kenza Rabba Left and Kenza Rabba Right. Let us open the book. Sorry, can you just send it to me on Skype? I think there's a... But you have to search for it because I have a download version of it. Ah, okay. okay. The first thing you will see in the book of Kenza Rabba is Tawheed. <laughs> What do you see? Tawheed. Give it a second. Hopefully it catches up. One second. This is Kenza Rabba right. Kenza Rabba right. Which means the right one. There's left and right, as I said to you. What is the first page? At Tawheed. Yeah, okay. The first page, let us zoom a little bit out. Yeah, I can see now on the screen. At Tawheed, in the name of the Hay Al Azim, Al Hay, Al Hay Al Qayyum, all those things is coming from here, all this you know, Muhammad stuff is coming from here. Uh, <clears throat> Let us open. Nobody see him, no one can, and he see and nobody can see him. Let me try to make it the, the, the text bigger. All right. Nobody can see him. لا يرى لا يرى ولا يحد لا شريكا له في سلطانه this is the Quran. This is the Quran. And this is a book exists long before Muhammad was born and before Christianity. And before, you know, I mean, this is way, way before. This is an ancient religion. Read it. And it's written exactly the same as the Quran. Al-Hannan, don't you call Al-Quran? Who are Jalalu or Al-Itqan? Who are Adlu or Al-Aman? Who are Rafa or Al-Hannan? This is the Quran. We continue reading. Uh, the same as Muhammad, he do Butlan, Nisan, you know, he, 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 he,
ملائكة تسبح الملك النور بأردية النور التي وهبهم إياها ملائكة الضياء and you know the stories continues and you know endless I don't know how good your Arabic you can read it but this is but Muhammad he was following he was a Sabian Sabian they are people who worship stars and they have uh, ranks of gods they have angels those angels they are creators and they believe the same thing they believe that God he created a creation then God he dis destroyed his creation and he sent better creation that's why the Quran says those people believe in the same thing there is people inherited the earth because there is people before him before them they were destroyed because they were bad uh -huh. all right yeah. they have the same thing and as you see, it's the same, same Quran, same stories, same tone. You can sing it in Arabic. You know, I, I cannot give you a link, but you have to search for it because this is the download. And this is this is the official copy from those people who believe in this religion. You know. Uh -huh. yeah. So from from your perspective um muhammad is a plagiarizing right uh, he's what a play someone who um takes other people's work and just copies it yeah as an example look in the front of me look what i have it says and don't glorify the sun neither the moon it is allah he is the one who ordered them and the planet and made them, gave them light. Allah. This is the Sabi book, yes? Yeah? This is the Sabi. It's called Kanza Rabba. You can search it. Kanza Rabba means the treasure. Kanz means treasure, you know. Rabba is from the word God. Yeah, and no. those people, they are the same people who believe that the God of the Jews is Satan. And why? Because Adonai, they say Adonai, he ordered the Jews to do circumcision. This is satanic. According to them. You will, those are the verses in the Quran. Okay. Um, I have a lot of thinking to do. CP. Well, uh, you are thinking for long, Yaqub. I don't know for how long it's going to take you, but whatever it takes. I mean, it's your life, it's your future, it's your, uh, it's your salvation, my friend. I can, I can do my best to help you. It's up to you to go wherever you want. I advise you to read, learn, knowledge, knowledge destroy ignorance. And when light comes, there's no darkness. And this is what Islam wants. Islam wants you to stay in darkness, fight light. You see, when, when a Christian, he tried to preach the gospel, they arrest him in Islamic countries. If Islam is a strong religion, why we cannot preach? Here we go. They come to America and they can open a, a, they can put a table in the street. Nobody beat them. Nobody kill them. And they are a little minority in America. Very little minority. Uh -huh. Tiny minority. So, if Islam is really from God and Islam is protected by God, so why we need to use violence and torture to protect Islam? Can't you protect Islam? Because now, internet came, and people, they have their freedom. You like it or not, you can live right now in Mecca, and you can be listening to me. All this is over. You cannot stop people from hearing. You can stop people from seeing. And it's over. And that's why Islam now is in the collapse mood. In the beginning, when Muslims, they came to Europe, they find people who know nothing about Islam and etc. They start lying to them and people start converting. It was successful. But then we came and we changed the game. And all those who converted to Islam, they are leaving. And those who they are born Muslims are leaving too. And I hope soon, Yaqub, you will find the truth and the truth will set you free, my friend. Uh -huh. um, just one thing, I, I apologize. Um... Because um, I'm still reading the Bible just to get some clarity on a few things. Um, 
You know, in the Bible, it's on John 8, 58, 57. It says, um, then the Jews said to him, you are yet 50 years old and you have seen Abraham. Uh, then he says, truly, truly, I tell you, Jesus declared before Abraham was born, I am. So I wanted to ask you this question. Mm. Knowing the story of Abraham, there is a story where the two angels and God yeah. arrives uh, to to give him the to tell him the news about Sodom and uh, uh, about Lot, right? Mm. Is this Jesus? Is this what you're saying here? You see, I believe that God uh, uh, he appeared to Abraham as a, in the in the form of a man, and when Jesus he said. Uh, before Abraham I am and Abraham he saw my day obviously he's referring to himself however we, we know that Jesus he said whoever saw me he saw the father so in the same time we can say that Abraham he saw the father by seeing Jesus you know what I mean when the disciple of Jesus when the, when, when the disciple of Jesus he said to him well why you don't show us the father and that's it mm -hmm. Then Jesus said to him, Well, I am with you all the time. And you do not know me yet? The one who saw me, he saw the Father. So when Abraham, he saw the man who came to him, obviously he saw Jesus because Jesus, he is saying, Abraham, he saw my day. But in the same time, that means he saw the Father, but in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I think I think I know this one. Yeah, um, you see, we 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 as a Christian, we believe like Musa as an example. There's many people they they met with God. They, we can say they saw God, but but they not really see Him the way He is. You know, uh, like God, He spoke to Moses, but as you see, He did not see the way God He is. He saw uh, a flame in a bush, and He heard the voice of God. But in the case of Abraham. The Messiah, he confirmed that Abraham, he saw, he met, he spoke, and he glorified him and he worshipped him. And that's why the Jews, they said to him, well, you are not even 50 years old. Which yeah. means what you are saying is really crazy. I mean, come on. You know? It's like now I say to you, well, uh, okay, Abraham, he saw me. Coming to me after a few thousand years, and you are saying to me that you, Abraham, he saw you? And this is where we know we, we, we laugh at when the Muslim they say, show me where Jesus said, I am God, worship me. You know? Well, Jesus, he say it all the time. Because this is what the Jews they want to kill him. Not because he is saying, I am a prophet. <laughs> you know? Because simply, this person, he just claimed that he is God. You know? When, yeah. when can, can Muhammad, can Muhammad, can Muhammad say, the one who saw me, he saw Allah? No, no, no. The thing is, I've read the Bible. Yeah. Um, my understanding is for sure that Jesus in the Bible is claiming to be God. That's my understanding. Okay. Okay. Because, you know, the, the, the reference that I gave you, um, you know, the one you just said, whoever seen me, I've seen the Father. Uh, yeah. He talks about being sin. I, I understand. But, but what I don't understand is... Um, Okay, well, what is your God? Like, okay, so let's say, for example, um, if someone becomes a Christian tomorrow, hmm. what do you want them to do, you know, in Islam? My friend, I don't, want, I don't want you to do anything. This is not my business. No, no, For, not you, but what's yeah. done, you know? What needs to be done, Islam. you see, your Jesus, he said, your faith saves you, your faith. So if you have faith on him, and then uh -huh. your faith will guide you to be following him. That's why Jesus said, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, which means worshiping me, saying to me, God, 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 he will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. So there's two things attached to each other. We are not saved by the action, but it's still our action is required. As an example, you are saved because you believed, but not because you are good. For all men, all women, they commit sin. Do we agree on that? Yeah. And the second we commit sin, there's a cracks in our glass, right? That's it. 
you put uh, you put duct tape on it you say i repent you it's still you are you have a cracks correct uh -huh. okay so repent does not make you really uh, a person without sin it is you changing yourself fighting your sin to be a better person however if that not the reason to be saved that will happen because you've been saved which means because you've been saved by believing in jesus you change the course of your life you know what i'm saying yes but what does he want what is what is yeshua want? well you know? what he wants you what he wants you to first to believe in him that he is the way he is the life he is the resurrection and there's no other way and then by believing you do what he taught us to do the ten commandment don't kill don't steal etc those are not to question in the same time in the top of that you do the act of christ forgive so you can be forgiven and this is the most thing in christianity that's why when they ask you how to pray he says pray like this our father out of heaven and then right away he says forgive to us the same as we forgive to others so when you ask god to forgive you why he will forgive you if you are a person full of hate and you don't want to forgive this is the logic of Jesus. I forgive you if you are a person who have a good heart. A person who cannot forgive, his heart is full of evil. Even if he's a victim, you know? Because why I should forgive you too? You need forgiveness and you don't want to forgive. And let the justice done by God. If somebody hurt you, God will punish that person. God will deal with him. There's heaven, there's hell. So we Christians, we believe in heaven and hell. We believe in salvation and salvation only by faith on Christ only. And then the Lord, he says, and from their fruits, you shall know them, not from Shahada. So you can say Shahada from now until next year. Still, you are no Christian. You can say Jesus is God, Jesus is God. But then you do drugs and then you kill and then you rape and then you whatever, blah, blah, blah. So you are no Christian. You will not go to heaven and you are not saved. From their fruits, you will know them. So the Lord, the Messiah, he will not recognize you because your name is George or John or Peter. He will recognize you or you have faith on him and you have a fruits. That's what he wants. This is the qualification for you to be saved. Nothing else. And that's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not talk. Not like, you know, somebody says, I will give donation. You know, like I'm a sinner. I go give donation. Oh God, forgive me. I you know this. Other, this is. Are you thinking you can bribe God? And then we continue second day, do the same thing. Well, this is this is this is a mockery in God. You know, God do not need your money. So you cannot bribe God in Christianity. You cannot fool Him. You cannot lie to Him, and you cannot say like you know. There's there's a video. It says the most gracious uh, dear to Allah is to say praise be to Allah. I mean, what the heck is that? So if you say one hundred times. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, 100 times, you go to heaven. What an easy way uh -huh. to go to heaven. So I go now, I can be a child molester, I can be a criminal, I can be a killer, and then I say, alhamdulillah, eh, the story is over. Praise be to Allah. <laughs> and then I go to heaven. So Islam, Islam make it so easy, because Islam is a lousy cult, satanic cult. With the Christ, Christianity is not that easy. You will, you no, will but... struggle, you will struggle. You see, the Muslim, they say to you, look at the Christians, look what they do. Who said that everybody will go to heaven? Who said to you, everybody claimed to be Christian is a Christian? But the question is, was Muhammad a good person to follow? He himself was the most filthy. I'm not trying to insult in your present, but this is how he is. The guy, he went to his own son wife and he flirted with her. A married woman. The man, he went after children's. The man he kidnap people, the one who torture people just to tell him where the money, they are hiding the money. The man he broke the command of God. The man himself, he broke the command of his God. The man himself, he don't follow God. The man he made a verse is saying, any woman she want to give herself to the prophet. So what does this have to do with God? What, why God need to make a verse? That any woman she can give herself to Muhammad, what does this have to do with God? What is the interest? I mean, imagine, Yaqub. Do you, do you, you, you know how, how massive this universe, right? And the earth, uh -huh. all of it, is not even a dust. 
The Earth, all of it, is not even a dust in this universe. So imagine who we are. We are just, you know, not even, I mean, if the Earth is not even a dust, so who we are? Nothing. And then, okay, so and then the God who created the whole universe is making a verse about females. They should give themselves to the prophet so he can sleep with them. What does this have to do with God? And where is the ethic? Okay. Is it ethical, Yaqub, that women, they come and they offer themselves to a man? And he is, he is married. He has many wives. Is that ethical? Think about it. Just give me an honest answer. What do you think if a woman, she come to my door right now? I, let us say I claim to be a prophet. Uh -huh. And even if I may be a prophet, a prophet. And then I say any woman, she want to give herself to the prophet. And then women, they come to my door and they start coming, offering themselves. What are you going to say about me if I do that? Be honest with me. Hypocrites. Isn't it? This is a scam. And this, um, obviously, I'm trying to just have sex, have fun. And I'm using those people who follow me. All cult leaders, they share two things. They want your women, no, you, and they want no, you, your, sorry, one thing. Your, your, your women. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, one thing. I, I apologize. Um, you see, I was told um, the verse you said, it's for sure there. I know the verse. Yeah. I was explained that even though this was given to the prophet, and yes, you can maybe... Um, you, you know, even this verse, it is very strange why it would be revealed. But I was told that he never did it. No, he did. There's many women, they offer themselves, and you can go and read the history. However, that will make it even more stupid. Think with me. Allah, he made a verse saying, any woman she can give herself, don't Allah knew who is going to give, who don't want to give? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so why Allah is saying, any woman, any believing woman, she can offer herself to the Prophet so he can sleep with her. If Allah do not, if Allah he knew, there's nobody would do that anyway. That even make it more stupid. And then why Allah he make another verse to fix it? He says, and he may refuse whichever of you, and he may take whatever he want. So the whole verse then there's no need for it. If nobody did it, nobody mm -hmm. offer herself, and he refused nobody. So Allah he wasted his time and our time. Adding things in the Quran, they never happen, and they will not happen. <laughs> no, I see what you're saying. You see, my friend, the problem is that Muslim, when they try to explain some, I'm not, I'm not putting you down. This is the answer you, they gave you, but we, uh, I find that the answer is a, is coming from people who have a very low IQ. Uh -huh. I mean, how come they didn't see it? So why Allah He made a law if the law nobody will practice it anyway? If nobody, if it's not needed, don't you knew tomorrow? Okay, nobody will offer herself to the Prophet. And nobody will sleep with the Prophet. So why I need to say, and whoever, which of them you refuse to sleep with, or whoever you like, you can accept, and etc. What is this is for? What does this have to do with, with religion anyway? What does this add to the God teaching? This is obviously, Something is made for the privilege of a man, his name is Muhammad, and it is a pure sexual privilege. And this is a clear sign right away when somebody claimed to be holy and he want to sleep with you, or with your wives, or with your women, obviously he is not holy. Why God did not make verses to Moses, says, his Moses, now you became the king of your people and you are uh, a prophet, a great prophet. Any believing Jewish women, she can give herself to Moses. Why only those things happen to Muhammad? Hmm? What about Abraham? Abraham, he struggled to have a second wife. A wife, not sex partner. A wife, he married her. And he struggled with God for it. And then... We find that God, why God of Abraham did not say to Abraham, okay, Abraham, you have a problem. Your wife, she's old. She can't give you kids. Go ahead. Any believing women, she can give herself to Abraham. This guy, he needed. This is the one who needed. He need to have children. He's getting so old. His wife is so old and they can't have kids. He is the one who need to have a woman who can give him kids. But God did not say that to Abraham. 
and God did not even tell him to marry a second wife. So why Muhammad who have many wives? He did it because he needed. Yep. He, 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 he lost his hope. That's it. You know, I'm going. I'm I'm, I'm getting so old. My wife is so old. That's it. You know, when your wife she is uh, she is uh, she is older than what women. The women they have a limit of age when they pass it. They cannot have kids. It's not a secret, right? Uh -huh. And this is what the Quran even mentioned that she became an old woman. So, who is the one who need to have an, a, 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 a new wife so he can have babies? And this is not for the purpose of babies, as you see, it's just for fun. Muhammad, he cannot have babies, obviously, because if he can have babies, he will have enough. You know, he, um, this guy, he have 13 wives, according to Muslims. Where is the children's? Zero children's. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean Muhammad has zero children? He has zero children. Fatima is not his daughter. This is Fatima, the daughter of Khadija. All the children of Khadija are the children of Khadija. And then the ones who they claim they have children from, from Mary the Cop, those are not from him. This is why Aisha, she was making fun of him. He says, you know that this is not, they don't look like you. Sorry, sorry for interrupting. You see Muhammad from Khadija. He has Fatima, Zainab, Ruqayya, and also Um Kathum. My friend, he have zero children from Khadija. This is why the people, the Arab, they were making fun of him uh, that he cannot have children. Zero. Okay, you know the hadith where it's okay. Uh, you know that uh, Khadija she adopted a, a child, correct? Khadija adopted a child. Yeah. Which child? Zayn, uh, Zayd. Zayd. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why she had, why she adopt and why he adopt for him? He, he cannot have kids and she cannot have kids. But at that time, Khadija she was old. Maybe because of her age, she can't have kids. We let it go. But then Muhammad he have more wives. Still they can't have kids. From all the women he stepped with, there is only women. One woman she is a slave. She is not a wife. Mary the Copt. According to Muslim, she got him Abraham. Or Ibrahim, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, is Ibrahim is the son of Muhammad? Is there any proof? Is it? Uh, is it? Is it? Uh, 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 Omar al-Khattab he went to kill the cousin of Mary the court because they accuse him that he is the father, and then he found that he had no penis because he's a slave. Is it Aisha who was saying to him he don't look like you? And isn't it the Quran says, وَمَا كَانَ مُحَمَدًا أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ Your Muhammad, he was yeah, not the father yeah. of any of your men. Mm -hmm. Rijal, yeah, yeah, men. Yeah, but why he was sure? Because he cannot have kids. He's, you know, he's already... No, but, of any... no, but it's men, not women, right? Huh? Because you, sorry, can you, can you hear me? Because you see, the Prophet, he had three sons. You know this. He right? never have kids, my friend. He never have kids. No, you see, he had Ibrahim, he had... From from Khadija, he had Ibrahim and he had Abdullah, and then from uh, sorry Ibrahim, he had from Mary the Copt, but from he had a Qasim and Abdullah from Khadija, both who died in childhood. If so you I, have, I don't, my uh, friend, if you have childrens, he will not adopt. And Muhammad himself, he said in the Hadith, "I was the most weak person between all mankind in sexual intercourse." And then I invoke my God, and he sent me a dish of shish kebab. I ate it, and then I get the power of 40 men. Is that correct? So Muhammad, he witnessed to himself that he have a problem, sexual problem. He cannot perform sex. Do you have the reference for this, sorry? Well, you can search it right now. I mean, you can find it, no problem. I'll find it for you. Yeah, but uh, uh, you see, when... Uh, let, let, let us go a little bit in details. Yeah. Who is the yeah. one? Who is the one who takes life? Who takes life? Yeah. Allah. Hmm. Why Allah took the lives of the kids of Muhammad if he have kids? Because you just said all, all of them they died. Why he did that to him? You, you, you see, from from what I've been told, I, I don't hmm. want to make excuses, you hmm. know. But from what I've been told in my studies, is that um, it was to, in a way, preserve Islam. Because then people would assume, like the way Shias do, that it's hereditary. So his son would be a prophet or should be the next caliph. 
You okay, know? Uh, but, I, I will go with you, but if this is the case, Allah failed because you just said the Shia do. So Islam was not preserved. So that it's a failure. Secondly, all, all prophets have kids. What does this have to do with the, you know, the, the, the do kids become, uh, they inherit the business and they become prophet too? In the top of that, uh, but they did in in uh, in uh, in Abraham's situation. Well, see, it, 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 no, they did not do. They did not do. It's God who decides that they will. They are prophets. It's not they decide. Even the Quran confirmed that. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, uh, when when you're a prophet, he speak about himself in a very funny way, and he claimed that he is a prophet of God, and he is descendant even from Ishmael, as he claimed. And then we find uh -huh. even from the Arabic books, even Muslim books, they claim that Ishmael, he learned Arabic at the age of 13. So how he is the father of the Arab. And if you are a son of a person who is not an Arab, you will not be an Arab. Is that correct? Mm. Yes, but okay. the way it works. No, the, what, what, what the way? No, what the way? If, I, if you are an Egyptian, your father is what? Egyptian and you are what? Egyptian, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, do you follow your mother or you follow your father in Islam? Father. Okay, so Ishmael wasn't what? Son of an Egyptian woman, correct? Okay, but if he marries, but, but hear me out, if he marries a Arab woman, okay, and he gives birth to his son, All right. and, and his son married to another Arab woman, still, then still you are following your father, my friend, still you are following your father. No, but eventually they become Arab. And then no, 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 it doesn't make... matter really what, how many you marry, because it's still, are you following? Let us go back. I just said to you, when you marry, when you, when a man he marry a woman, and this is say the man he's an Egyptian, the son is born will be what? What's the father? Will be an Egyptian. If the father is Egyptian, the son is Egyptian. Okay, so the second son now, not Ishmael, he is Egyptian. He marry another woman. She's an Arab. What the son will be? Egyptian. Doesn't matter how many women. <laughs> no, no, but but you see, when his son, but, but you see what happens is that eventually they become part of the community. People, he will become an. Arab. See, but now he this is know. different. Then, so he is not from the lineage, lineage of uh, Ishmael, you know, because now he is part of the community. So he's not an Arab. Either Muhammad was an Arab or he was not, and that will destroy Islam. Why? Because the Quran says we never send a messenger except from the people speaking the tongue of the people not only he speak their tongue he have to be from them and if in order for muhammad to be a messenger for the arab he have to be literally an arab correct mm -hmm. yeah and this is the quran chapter 14 verse number four and that destroy all the claim in the same time uh you muslim believe that ishmael and abraham they came to the kaaba correct Yes. And even they rebuild the Kaaba. Do we agree? <laughs> okay. But is it true that Muhammad is the only one who came to Mecca and nobody came before him? Uh, as a prophet to the people, yes. Mm -hmm. So Abraham never was there and neither Ishmael. You see, when the Quran says, Nobody was before you ever sent to this town and nobody received scriptures before you to this town. Mm -hmm. That means neither Abraham, neither Ishmael was there. But the Prophet told us in a hadith about Safa Marwa, you know about this one, right? Let us focus on this one first. Mm -hmm. If nobody received messages before them, before Muhammad, and the Quran is so clear, you know, see, he didn't say they, they were not given, he says before thee. You see, you know what you know what the word before mean, right? Yeah. Okay. So before it's mean whatever before. So they never and we we have given them no scriptures which they study, nor we send them before thee. Any warner, any. So how foolish it is to say such a thing when Muhammad he just claimed in different verse in the Quran 
that Abraham was there, Ishmael was there, and Ishmael he spoke to his people and he warned his people. So Ishmael was warning who? <laughs> yeah, I see, I see, I see the points. Okay. Um... Jacob, J Jacob, my friend. After all what you see, honestly, don't you want to leave Islam? I mean, you keep saying to me, I see, I see, I, I know, and you agree. Mm -hmm. All of this did not make you right yet decide to leave. Isn't this is a clear, stupid thing? Either Abraham was there or he was not. If nobody, if Allah never sent, okay, Abraham, he was building the Kaaba. He was sent for like a picnic or he was in a mission. Abraham was there on a mission. You know? Exactly. So Allah, he sent him there. Allah, he sent him. He did not go by himself, correct? He went there to take the, the Ismail, his wife, uh, sorry, Ismail, his mother there huh. and to leave them. You know, that, you know this story is very funny because Abraham, he decided to take, take Ishmael far in the middle of nowhere. Where is no grass, yeah. there's no trees, there's nothing in the desert of nowhere. And... Uh, <laughs> And he left them there. What kind of a man he is? What is that? Yeah, because there, there, there's no people there. Yes, yes, but you see, huh. it's, it, the ultimate goal was so that his lineage will become that of the Prophet. This is what we're told, you know. But, but uh, look what happened. Look what happened. If there was nobody there and his lineage, that's mean everybody in Arabia is from the lineage of Abraham. Because there's nobody there. At least in Mecca. But what, look, look what your what your uh, what your book says that Ishmael he married a woman from Jerham. Jerham they are the enemy of Quraysh. So how Muhammad is descended from Ishmael when those are the one who been kicked out of Quraysh out of, of Mecca and they've been killed. In the same time, if Abraham was there in a mission, and Ishmael even was there too. And they built yeah. the foundation, which means Ishmael now is a man. It's not like they went there for a day or two. They built the foundation of the house. Rising it, it was destroyed after the flood yeah. of Noah. So now it was destroyed. And I wonder why Allah destroyed his house. This is very funny. But then, you know, many hundred years after, thousand years, Muhammad, he come and he say, Allah told me, and we have given them no scriptures which they study. But isn't it the Quran says that Abraham, he have scriptures? Abraham has scriptures, correct. So Abraham was there, right? Yes. Abraham, when he went there, he decided to, not to take his scripture with him. I, I don't know, to be honest. No, That's Yaqub, wrong. come on, you know, come on. I mean, imagine I am a Christian. And now I am going to Mecca, and that's it. I forgot all my scriptures. <laughs> Come on, Yaqub. What happened? The guy, he decided to leave it where? Isn't it scriptures in your head, in your heart? Is it what your God told you? Those people don't write books. Yeah. So, Abraham in chapter 87, and Moses, they have scriptures. And Abraham, he went all the way to Mecca, as you see in the front, uh, verse in the Quran, chapter 2, verse 127. And he took his son with him, and obviously they lived there for some time. And Ishmael, he stayed there according to the Muslim stories. And then we go, we find other verse saying, you know what, we never give them scriptures. And you know what, we never send them anyone before you to warn them. And to make it more stupid, Muhammad, he add the word before. You see, if Muhammad did not say before thee, the Muslim can escape it. They can say, okay, at the time of Muhammad, well, there is nobody. We never send him anyone. That makes sense, correct? Mm -hmm. But when he added the word before thee, that is a disaster. Because that's it. Before thee, no warner, any warner. So all the story of Abraham and Ishmael came to Mecca is destroyed with no mercy.
Mm-hmm. So, Yaqub, are you leaving Islam now or not yet? Come on, say it. You know, you know, it's not something that you can, you know, just do like this. I have to. It's not about something you just like this. I mean, come on, it's in the front of you. What that, this, that. I mean, everything we showed you. I never said something without showing it to you in the screen. Actually, there's only one. It's about Al Kufayt. I can give it to you about your prophet. He Allah, he sent him a dish of shish kebab so he can get the power of forty men. And this is another another story proving that Muhammad is really mentally ill. You know, it's a it's a clear sign of mental illness to claim that God. He sent you a dish of shish kebab and then you ate it and then you get the power of 40 men. What kind of God and what kind of a prophet we are talking about? You know, why, why Allah, he is doing such a thing? I mean, this is really uh, uh, very funny and very stupid and very long. This is the book of at al Kubra. I will put it for you on the screen. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you heard of at al Kubra, right? Muhammad, no, Muhammad Ibn Sa'ad, volume number 8, uh, yeah. page 192. It says here, from, 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 as usual. Okay, and then, uh, it says here from Ibrahim reported that uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I was the most weak person between all mankind in intercourse, in effing, until Allah he sent down al kufayt which is shish kebab. And I, each time I requested, he sent it to me in a sa'a. A sa'a at that time, he was like for 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Like sa'a today, it means 60 minutes. But at that time, it's like 50. So each time Muhammad went to a woman, Right away, Allah, in like 15, 20 minutes before he if, he sent him a dish of shish kebab, he ate it, boom, 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 he got the power. Let's translate. Google translation. Hmm. Let us see. Here we go. Uh, the prophet he said uh, I mean the translation is really horrible here okay here it says from the authority etc the master of Allah he said I was the one of the least people in intercourse you can see it until, yeah, until Allah sent down uh, shish kebab you know the translation is not right and and then he continues saying, and each time I wish it to have it, it come to me in and like within within an, uh, uh, twenty minutes or fifty minutes. Here it says an hour, and then I get the strings of forty men because of the dish of shish kebab. Each time he wanna go to a woman, he invoke Allah. Allah, he send him a dish. He eat the dish. Boom boom. This is from God. And here it says that your prophet he used to F nine women in one night. Why? Because of the shish kebab. This is a, this is a prophet. If you are following, let me post the link. I will shorten the link. I will post it in the chat. Let me post it. So what do you think, Yaqub? Um, you are calling me now for long. How long you, you, you are talking? I mean, not today. I mean, how many time or how long you call me? Yeah, this is long. This is long. And until um, now, you aren't convinced that Muhammad is a fraud? To, 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 to be honest, I wanted, I really wanted um, someone more knowledgeable to speak, but um, they clearly don't want to speak to you. 
they run away. I understand why. No. Yeah. Um, I think it's clear, you know. Um, I think it's clear. I, I don't need to say it, but you know, I think we both know it's clear. So you know, it's clear that Muhammad is a fraud. waiting it's clear that muhammad is a fraud no i, I didn't say that but what i said you just say it you just say it it is clear it's clear what okay continue the sentence it's clear no, clear it's, what no no you see brother we, we've discussed i think we, we, we both know it's clear you know it's a clear what uh, continue the sentence it's a clear what are you, are you afraid Yaqub? it's okay you can tell me under uh, not in the air if you want it's okay I, I, you know, I, I have some questions that maybe we can discuss. Uh, you see, you're changing quickly. topic now. You're changing topic, Yaqub. So, are, is it clear what? <laughs> 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 okay, Yaqub, I'm not going to force you. I understood you. But you can, you can text me in Skype and you can tell me what you want to say. I understand where are you now. I understand. For me, I know already that you are out of Islam and I'm happy for you, my friend. Uh, feel free to call me anytime you want. As long as I am live, as you know, I don't uh, keep my Skype open. But I open it only when I go live, and uh, I'm really happy uh, to talk to you, and I'm happy that you received the conclusion which you know we were looking for, and I hope soon you will accept Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think you'll be happy. But but let me just say this. Sorry. All right. Um, I will try to get a a um, regardless. I will still push. For, for a scholar to speak to you because um, I, I think they need you. Um, I think it would be best for everyone. But I just wanted to say that. So right. I will still try. Yeah. And remember, remember, it's not me who is running away from them. It's them who they are uh, avoiding, right? I, I don't work. Here we go. The same you call me how easy it is, they can call me. I don't even know who is calling me. So they have no excuse to say no. And the result of saying no, as you see, people are leaving us now. Imagine, Yaqub, right. after people watch this video, not only this video have an impact on you, how many Muslims they will watch this? And how many Muslims will leave this cult? And if a Muslim sheikh, he claimed that he can answer, then why you don't come to the rescue? If, you know, forget about debating me. It's not about me. It's about saving the Muslims from being lied to if I'm lying to them. Why did they want to do it? Because they knew they have no answer and when I'm saying the truth. Everything I say to you, I show in the screen with reference. Is that true? Yes, yes. And you know, actually, I shared this. Um, I, I, there's, a, there's an institution, you know, Islamic institution called Sapien. Mm. Uh, they, they do Dawa, they do all this stuff, right? Um, and I will contact them because I know someone who is part of this um, thing. Um, and I've asked them to, you know, debate you. And I said that I will even pay for it myself, you know, to, to, just so that we can try to get some of this clarified. Um, but, they, but they told me that um, they know who you are and that they're not interested. Hmm. So, what about, I, I what, about what do you think about contacting Zakir Naik and tell him your story? Tell him that this person, he put a lot of doubt in, and many Muslims live in Islam, including me. So can you, brother, debate him so you can give us our faith back? Can you please, you know, email him and whatever the email he will send you back, you know, you can share it with us. And I know what he was saying. So we just love. Whatever the email, I will put the screen as it is. Email him. We will, we will, we will, uh, we will hide any private information I have to do with you. And, uh, Whatever Zach and I can answer you, tell him the story. There's many Muslims are living in Islam, you know, talking to this person. Can you please agree to debate him? He will call you. I will call him. I will be happy to call him anytime. 
Have you debated any any scholars or anything like that that I can watch? I know there was. The uh, you know, I, I never spoke to a scholar because there's none. Who is a scholar these days? There's no scholars. Yeah. Have you ever heard of somebody a scholar? The one they call him a scholar, they make fun of him. The second he says something, they don't agree uh -huh. with. They torture the guy. The Sheikh Omran, as an example, he said that Jesus he knew the hour. The Muslim they start spitting at him. He said that the Quran is changed. The Muslim they start attacking him. Yes, Al Qadi, uh, he is in the narrative. He is not a scholar for them. Uh, but I have to agree. All of them they claim to be scholars, but none of them is a scholar because a scholar in Islam, as the Quran says, is the one who say we believe is not the one who knows. Correct? Uh -huh. You know that, right? Yeah, I know this verse. I know this verse. Yeah. yeah. So the Quran itself it's saying, in order to be a scholar, you have to be an idiot, not a knowledgeable person. You just say, I believe without questioning. This is who is a scholar. And this is in chapter three, verse number seven. So when the Muslim, they say scholars, I love. What scholars? Even the Quran says nobody knows what they mean, save Allah. <laughs> and those who. And those who have knowledge, they say we believe. What is the scholars? They say we believe, not because they are scholars, not just because they say we believe. They we give them the title of a scholar. And those who have a great knowledge is the one who say we believe. Okay, but the same verse says nobody can explain it. Uh, anything you want to say, Yaqub, before we go for today? Um, no, just just pray for me. Just pray. I, uh, we, I will ask all the Christians to pray to our friend here, Yaqub. He is struggling heavily, and uh, I can tell. And I can tell that already he is out of Islam, and he is uh, trying his best to bring some Muslims who call them scholars to, uh, to hold him, you know, back to Islam, but he could not find any. So we will pray for two things. We will pray that you will be able to find a scholar to come here and get me busted. And we will pray that Yaqub, he will see the truth and the truth will set him free. And that by accepting Jesus, and Jesus alone will save you, my friend. He's not a man, he's not a Christian prince, he's not a bishop, he's not a priest, he's not a prophet. It is the Messiah. His name is holy, his act is holy, and he is now in the holy heaven. He is the holy living God. He is the Word of God, the Word of God who is the talking, walking, talking, living Word of God. I invite you, Yaqub, to accept the Messiah, to be your Savior, for no other name beside His name. And there's no way to heaven except His name. And the second you accept Him, you are in different stage of life. I pray for you, my friend. You are a very nice person. And I can tell you are coming from a very nice family. So I say, and I pray for your family too. I say, may the Lord bless your mother, bless your father, bless your brothers and sisters, bless your family. And we pray that the Lord will bring them, all of them to be saved so they can join us in the holy heaven of the holy God, the Messiah, the Christ, who is our savior. For that we say, Amen. And we ask all the Christians to pray for Yaqub. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay. All right, Yaqub. Take care. If you feel to say anything before you go, just say. But but just to be clear, it's just believing in in what you said, but to follow the Ten Commandments. That's all. That's all that you guys are. Um, that's all that. Uh, the Ten Commandment. Ask. The Ten Commandment is a guidebook of the highway. But the highway is Christ. Just to make it simple for you. It's like how to sorry, find sorry. how to find the interest, yes, you know, the Ten Commandments. Sorry, just, sorry. You believe in God. What is, what is it? Yeah. You mm -hmm. believe in God, which means you believe in the Messiah. But yeah. the Ten Commandment is to keep you in the road, so you don't go in the dirt. The dirt will make you dirty. You follow the Ten Commandment. You stay in the road, and your faith on Christ is going to save you, not because you just keep the Ten Commandment. You have to have faith. That's why the Lord, he said, from their fruit, you shall know them. So the Lord will know you, not because you said Shahada, not because you said, I believe in Jesus. He will know you because you are a true follower of Christ. This is how you will be known. There's no hypocrite. 
There's no liars. There's no deceivers. There's no shahada. Nothing can save you except being a true follower of Christ. This is a choice you make and nobody else. The Ten Commandment is just to guide you in the map. Where is the road? Stay in the road. Don't go in the dirt. The dirt will, the, the Bible says the wage of sin is death, is hell. So the Ten Commandment is just to push you away from the dirt. Stay away from the dirt, my friend. And the only one who can keep you away from the dirt is the Messiah. That's all. Okay, thank you. All right, my friend. Thank you very much for calling us, and we will be happy to hear you again soon. God bless you, Jacob. Take care. Bye. <clears throat> uh, well, we are, you know, happy to have uh, our friend here, and I think it was a very interesting conversation, and I believe many Muslims will leave Islam. We have a person, his name is Ishmael. He tried to call me. Let us try to call him. Maybe we can save one more person. I find it very strange that Muslim they call when I'm speaking to a Muslim. And when I stop speaking, they don't call. You know, like the second I call somebody, somebody speak to me, all Muslims call. You know, here we go. The guy now is not answering. When I receive a call, it's like they are doing it on purpose to drop the call, you know, it is just to disturb, not because they want to speak to me. Uh, as you see, uh, my friends, we as a Christians, we have a million reasons to believe in the Messiah. And we have a billion reasons to refuse Muhammad. First, he changed his name and he called himself the praised one. This person is hijacking even the name of God. And yet he claimed that he is just a prophet. But I am a prophet who wants to sleep with your wives and your women. And you need to give me your money. And I want you to attack the neighbors. And he said to the Muslims, attack the Romans so we can get the blonde girls. So he's a prophet who tempt his men by blondie. You see the ethic? All his friends are lousy gang, criminals, thieves, you name it. They fight even over a panty, an underwear, to the point even Allah, he made a verse about it, that the Muslims accused their prophet that he stole an underclothes, a red underclothes. And then Allah, he said the verse says, it is not the prophet who stole the underwear. It's not for a prophet to steal an underwear. But Allah refused to tell us where is the underwear. And until now we are looking for it. This is how trashy this religion is. Imagine if the disciple of Jesus, imagine, God forbid me for saying that. I mean, forgive me. He was, they were accusing Jesus that he took an underwear. Imagine what kind of disciple they are. What kind of a group they are? What kind of believers those believers are? The believers accusing their best man, the prophet of God, that he is a thief and he took an underwear. And then Muhammad, he made a verse to clean himself from the accusation. And what the verse says, it's not Muhammad. Think about it. The one who's saying that is God. Can't God say, go to the house of this guy, open the drawer, you will find the panty there? Actually, this verse confirmed that Muhammad is the one who took it. Because if Allah is God, and he knew the unseen, and now the Muslims themselves accusing Muhammad that he took a panty, shouldn't Allah say to clear him? Hey, go to the house of this guy, open the door, or go to his house, his wife, she is wearing it, or he is wearing it, take off your pants. What kind of a man he is? His God himself could not prove that he is not the one who stole the underwear. Allah was in the office, he received an alarm, a message alarm. We, 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 we. What the heck is that? What's happening? The angel Jibreel told him, Takbir, 
by Allah, the Muslims accusing uh, Prophet Muhammad uh, that he stole an underwear. Allah, he could not take it. So he decided to clear his name, not by doing investigation, not by finding the one who stole it for real, by saying it's not him. Well, isn't it obvious that this is Muhammad saying he is not him? And imagine you are God. And then this God, he have a believers. And the Muslim, they say that the Sahaba of the Prophet are the best of mankind. The best of mankind accusing the best of mankind that he stole a panty. How nice. <laughs> He went missing. Allah was accused by accusing his prophet. The best of mankind accused of burglary. Taking a panty. And the one who accused him were the Muslims. Allah he received the news. A horrible day. Fake news. CNN and Trump, he said the truth. What the religion? And then the Muslims, in order to fix it, they make it even more bright. More bright as a color from the panty itself. You go to the books of interpretation, chapter 3, verse 161, you will see the Muslims, they give you more details. The details you don't want to see. The details you don't want to read. The details is telling us what kind of a corrupt society and what kind of a gang Muhammad was having as companion. And they say to you, those companions, they were the best of mankind because they are the first one who believe in Allah and his prophet. And they went with him for jihad. And then we discovered that the jihad was for the sake of panties and the wares and gold and silver and vagina. Allah mentioned in the Quran that some of them, they said that the Prophet, he took some clothes from the booty. And you know, Prophet Muhammad, he loved booty. That's why he shake it too. And the Muslims, they give us all kinds of interpretation. Even some of them, they give us even the color. Red velvet. It is red, brother. And now we understand why the fight is happening. Imagine you attack the Jews or you attack the Arab and you find a red bikini at that time. How many will fight for it? How many will die for it? And Allah himself is busy with it. He decided to make a verse about it. If you think that clothing is not important, you are mistaken. As you see, it has impact on Allah. Because of a red velvet, there is a chapter in the Quran about it. A verse about it. The God himself is speaking about it. Are you kidding me? It must be the truth. From the red velvet God. Akbir! This is Islam, my friend. And this is Muhammad. The one who went to his own son wife and he flirted with her when the husband was not there. Not ever let someone like Muhammad into your home. Even if he claimed to be your father. Ah, Lord have mercy. Did we have a good time? So listen carefully. If you like us to come back fast, faster than Muhammad, coming back to looking for the red velvet, you should share our videos, the link with everybody, so we can have at least 20,000 so we can come back live on air. If you do so, we will be back as soon as we have the 20,000 people here. So please share the link, let people see the truth. And this is how we can help the Muslims. We don't hate the Muslims, we'll never hate them. 
even though they've been taught hate against us, but we are Christians, remember that? And Christians, they've been taught love. For God is love, my friend. And with the love of Jesus, we say thank you, God bless you, Christ is Lord, and Muhammad is nothing but a fraud. See you soon again. Take care. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran is mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him, 